I'm Stuart Butterfield, one of the co-founders of Flickr. Gervais Restaurant, authentic French cuisine. We started up in Vancouver, British Columbia in uh, 2003, late 2003, launched in early 2004, uh, and in 2005 we were acquired by Yahoo, and now we live down here in, uh, well, we live in San Francisco and, and work in Silicon Valley. So, what, what sort of, uh, how different it, it is now working inside of Yahoo, inside of a large corporation? versus working in, in Canada and, and, and on a small startup? Well, I think the biggest difference is really the, the commute. We do uh, 60, 64 kilometers each way, one down, one back up every day. Um, but it's hard, to, it's hard to tell. I mean, I've never worked at a big company before, ever. I did a lot of consulting work and sometimes consulted for large companies. But it was always one point of contact or one group inside of the large company that, we, that I dealt with. Um, so some things it's kind of hard to tell because at the same time when we were acquired, we were also growing very quickly. You know, it's like 70, 80 percent growth every month. Um, when we were, I think it was, it was about uh, 200, 250,000 people or so, you know, maybe from the start of the acquisition talks to when we were acquired, and now it's 4 million users. Um, so it's much, much bigger and it's hard to tell what life would have been like if we were independent but still so large. But some things, you know, frankly are harder. The companies are sometimes slower and, and harder to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, uh, we have, you know, excellent resources and uh, we get hardware much cheaper because I'm part of a big company and when I need to talk to a lawyer, I just go upstairs to the seventh floor and I can just talk to talk to someone. Uh, so there's a lot of things that are disposable that we, that we didn't have before. So, so you're, you're saying it's, it's, it's a, perhaps sometimes a bit slower um, when you want to introduce a new a new feature, a new um, new things on, on, on the service, uh, do you think do you think you you have done it faster if you just a startup or is it? Well, that part actually we're we're left uh, very independent on the product decisions. So it's not like we have to go get something approved before it can happen. Um, we do have to get things like budgets approved uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and in olden time, to to order servers, we would call the representative at the server company. We would call them, we would put it on our credit cards, and then a couple of days later they would come. Uh, and now it's there's a more formal process, and there's a hardware review committee and, and stuff like that. But you know, in terms of the product itself, uh, the Flickr team has done a very good job, and so we're, we have a lot of independence. There's no one checking things out before we launch them. There's no review process or, or anything like that. So it's still the same group of people making the decisions. How, how big is the Flickr team now? Um, now it's, well, we're, we're in the middle of hiring right now, so it's almost 20 people. But still, it's a very small team relative to how big the, I mean, how wide the adopted the product is. I mean, there's 16 and a half million unique visitors. Uh, the last one I know, maybe, that was actually for May, so I don't know what, what the end of the month numbers were for June. But, you know, obviously, a very large audience of visitors, as opposed to registered users, is about 4 million. Um, and so it's a small team covering a, a very well trafficked site. So, so that's pretty much the same, or more or less the same number of people than when you were independent. It's about twice as many. Like when we were, uh, the, when the acquisition actually closed, we were ten people. So. so, 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 how can you, how can you, manage that much traffic? I mean, and and make sure you're you're really on top of all the features. I mean, with just twenty people. Uh, we just work all the time. <laughs> All day, every day, always work, 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 work. Uh, that's part of it. I mean, we are we are trying to hire uh, a lot of people right now. It's not, uh, you can't see my, my briefcase here, but it's thick with uh, white resumes. It takes a long time to, to hire, but um, engineers, engineers, product managers, project manager, designer, um, people who do web development. Customer support, everything really. Google uh, has Picasa. Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't have right now a service that goes with it. They have the, the client software. They actually just launched uh, Picasa Web uh, a couple weeks ago. Oh. 
Yeah, so it's brand new. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. So, that's a, okay sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So, is, is there, do you have any plans to actually have a client software? We've actually thought about it quite a bit. Um, and we have actually a, a pretty well developed code base for, for doing something. Um, and it's a question of how much we want to invest in it. There's a lot of third party tools, um, desktop software management. Uh, applications have Flickr plugins. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as simple and straightforward for people to use, but for example, Apple's iPhoto has a, a plugin that there's, I don't even know how many people use it, but in the tens or maybe even hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and things like ACDC, Jask, Photo, uh, there's a lot of people actually who use Picasa and then upload to Flickr using the email uh, upload capabilities. So, um, there's no specific plans either way. It's a very big investment to support desktop software. Um, you know, writing the software is one thing, but pretty soon it'll be switched from XP to, to, um, to Vista, yeah. and that'll be a very big difference. There's a huge amount of support and testing you have to do. And so our overall, our preference would be to integrate with existing products and do that. Not only like that, because the existing products have a user base already. So if you use Adobe Photoshop album or Adobe Elements, um, it's much more like you want to keep using that and, and still use Flickr rather than use our client software. So do you do develop those plugins or how do you No, help? third parties develop them. So uh, sometimes they're developed by the uh, by the software vendors themselves, the people who distribute those programs, and sometimes they're developed by third parties. So it's a mix. We have an open API and so there's a lot of, um, I don't even know how many, but you know, more than 10,000 API keys out there, actually more than 20,000 now, um, and there's a lot of developers making a lot of a lot of software to help bridge between Flickr and, and other programs. Mm. And you provide the, the development kit and everything? Yeah, there's, um, we have the APIs and there's also libraries available for every language, so C, C++, C Sharp, .NET, Perl, Python, PHP, and pretty much everything you can think of, there's uh, a good Flickr development kit to go with it. Okay. Who, who do you see as your competitor, prime competitors? You know, we don't really have any um, direct competitors who are uh, at, a, at a scale where we, we really feel like we're competing with them. There's a lot of alternatives to Flickr. In, 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 this, in that sense, they're indirect competition. Obviously, people have a finite amount of time to spend online. So to the extent that Flickr attracts new users by being a good destination site, we're in competition with everything. You know, humor sites and news sites, but also obviously things like MySpace, um, Facebook, you know, and, and sites like that. Um, and for photo sharing, I mean, Flickr has some unique capabilities and kind of a unique flavor or ethos. Um, but some people just want to put their photos on a web page and it's easier for their friends and family to see them. And to that extent, there's obviously a huge number of photo sharing sites. Uh, and so we're indirectly in competition with them. We're not really going after the same, uh, we're trying to attract the same user. So it's, it's a little different. We're kind of in a unique position that way. Okay. I'm sure more competition will come. Thanks, Carolyn. Picasa Web, you're mentioning that? Well, it's pretty different. I mean, I think that a lot of the, well, A, Flickr's better, uh, and I say that without any uh, bad feelings towards Picasso, but it's a brand new product. Um, it's much simpler, and so for, and to that extent, you know, it's, it's better for a certain class of person to use, and certainly if you use Picasso, it's very nicely integrated. Um, but uh, Flickr has a lot of capabilities that it doesn't have. But most importantly, Flickr is, in addition to being having a good set of photo sharing tools and you know in browser drag and drop create sets and stuff like that, there's a huge community and a, you know tens of thousands of groups or maybe even hundreds of thousands of groups at this point. Um, it's a great place to learn about photography. It's a great place. You know, we have people in Australia subscribing to the photo streams of people in Iran. Um, and people in France watching photos from people in Japan. And so, you know, it's a, this worldwide um, phenomenon that isn't really, you know, that you don't get when it's a, kind of a single user application. Because web is more for putting your photos on a web page and people can check them out. Joseph, if you could touch on maybe the sharing side. Um, RSS, um, we're talking, Apple was talking about photo casting. Yep. Yeah. 
what, what, what are you doing in that area? Well, I think that that's really one of the, the fundamental design principles of Flickr is that people upload their photos uh, and publish a steady stream of them. In fact, we call it a photo stream. So, like a feed. Obviously, there's, uh, there's RSS feeds and everything. Um, so a lot of people subscribe that way, but the sort of core of Flickr is people uploading photos, you choosing contacts, adding contacts, adding people to your social network, and therefore subscribing, and Flickr builds aggregated views um, of all the photos from the people you subscribe to. Um, and it's a little bit more subtle than that because, uh, you know, People can give you special permissions, they can make you part of their friends list or family list and you can see private photos and things like that. But essentially it's one big tool for aggregating uh, all these different uh, photos from all these different people, but also photos from a bunch of different groups. So hardcore Flickr users might have 500 or 1,000 contacts and belong to 500 or 1,000 groups. Right. Another way of sharing the picture is to integrate it on its blog. Mm -hmm. or the MySpace or so what sort of tools do you provide to, to actually integrate those pictures? In? We have some really good stuff for blogs. Uh, about people who upload photos have the option whether to display this or not but by default above every photo is a little button that says blog this and then you can set up your blog um, using the blogging services API um, so you press the button, type something in your post and that's it. So you can blog from inside of Flickr. Um, you can also set up some stuff to happen automatically. So I have, uh, I was going to reach for my camera phone, but it's far away. Um, you take a photo with your camera phone, email it to Flickr, and tell Flickr that any photos you email to this special address automatically get posted to your blog. Um, and that's really cool. So there's a lot of, when we introduced that feature at least, um, very few uh, blogging tools had um, uh, features which would enable, you know, email you to email a photo in and have it posted automatically, but you could do it through Flickr. So the photo would get uploaded to Flickr, saved in your Flickr account, and then we would post to your blog with a link to that photo and actually put the photo in line. Um, there's also a bunch of little widgets, we call them badges, that people can use and put them on their external site, which will show some of their photos or all of their photos, some do a search or, or whatever. What do you think? Uh, what do you think are perhaps missing, or, or in terms of feature? Or what are the features that that, that you see perhaps coming up in, in Flickr and that we users? Have, well, we don't really talk about upcoming features so much, but we have a list of uh, 800 things on our to-do list, and they you know range them from tiny little things always kind of bugged us and wanted to fix, mm -hmm. do it slightly different way to major new uh, things which sort of change the the fundamental nature of Flickr. Um, Adding more other types of media? We've gone back and forth on that. I mean, when we first launched Flickr, we imagined that it would be not just allow other media types, like video and audio and, and, um, and other stuff, but that a lot of people would actually create stuff collaboratively inside of it, so make music together. Uh, now we've, I mean, I was very early on, we've diverged completely from that path. It's not out of the question that we would add video, this is something we thought about, but not video in the sense of produced videos with titles and credits at the end, more like the stuff that comes off your camera phone or your, or your digital camera, because a lot of desktop photo management software packages treat those just in the same way, you know, it's like a photo, you see a still from it and you click on it and it plays, um, and that's certainly a possibility for Flickr. I think other media types besides that, audio, probably not, I just think it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Mm. How do you deal with copyright? Well, we're under the provisions of the DMCA uh, a safe harbor status. When we do notice flagrant violations of copyright, we have the kind of the authority to just delete accounts or delete photos. Um, but because we can never really be sure, we, we tend to just follow the provisions of the DMCA. So when we get a sworn affidavit from a copyright holder that someone else is in violation of the copyright, then we sort of go through the standard process of reviewing the claim and, uh, and removing the content. And, you know, because we were very strict when we first started, um, it's much less of an issue on Flickr than it is on a lot of um, media, you know, user-contributed media sites. Uh, and also, I think that uh, you see it more often, copyright violations, you see it more often with video than with photos because um, 
video is harder for people to make, for, for most people, you know, most people don't. I mean, I actually don't have any video editing tools, unless there's one built into Windows, um, and I don't know anything about video editing, but I do have a lot of image processing software and stuff like that. So, uh, copyright hasn't been a huge problem for us. Mm. So, so tell us again, what's, what's, what are the provisions of the MCA that sort of covers that area? Well, the intention was that, just like if you have a phone company, um, and two people call each other using your phone service and plan something evil, um, you're not responsible for it. The idea was that people who publish uh, content contributed by their users are responsible for copyright violations in the content. Otherwise, it would be impossible to run any any sort of business that published web pages for people or published photos or video or audio or anything like that. So the, the process roughly goes, uh, someone files a complaint, they have to swear that they're a copyright holder. There's a whole thing they have to go through. Um, that gets filed with the lawyers. We keep the notification um, on file. We notify the person who uploaded the content, and then we remove it, pending the counterclaim from them. But it's it's uh, it's fairly automatic stuff. In other words, there's not a lot of uh, we don't look and try to establish whether someone really has copyright or not because that would just suck up all of our time. Uh, we just follow the follow the provisions exactly. So if somebody if if, if a copyright owner comes to you, then that's when you you're gonna start. Yeah, they, they would have to come though with with the the infringing picture. They'd have to tell us where it is so we can find it. Because sometimes people will write in and say, "Hey, that picture of the dog was taken by me, and someone else uploaded it." And so there's. Well, you said yeah. you can do a search for dog on Flickr, and you'll see that on others maybe five million photos or ten million photos that have dogs in them. So obviously we can't figure out which one is which. Um, yeah, so people will point out the one that they, and if, if they're lying, the other party has the opportunity to do a counterclaim and stuff like that. Right. So uh, how, how is the life here in Silicon Valley? It's good. Like I said, I hate the commute, uh, and actually we're looking, we're going to be moving our office to San Francisco as part of the yeah, San Francisco office in the fall, and I think we're all looking forward to that. I think it's I mean, where we are now, uh, south of San Jose, I guess in southern San Jose. It's, it's a very beautiful place, uh, you know, rolling hills and nice trees and stuff like that. But on the whole, it's it's Silicon Valley is not a very nice place. Boring. It's asphalt and parking lots, strip malls, big box retail. It's, uh, I can't say I like it all that much. I, I like uh, I like the city as much more. So you, or the, the countryside like this, yeah. but not that... Not Middle. The, yeah, it's not even, I mean, it's hard, you can't say it's a suburb, because Santa Clara and Sunnyvale, northern San Jose, they're cities, but they're just, there's no, there's no there there. You know, there's no city anywhere. Uh, you mentioned spam on your on your talk. Are there a lot of spam? I mean, it's, it's actually a relatively small problem for us, because it's so... It's the amount of effort it takes them versus the amount of effort it takes us to get rid of it. The ratio is wrong. Um, if you want to spam blogs, it's pretty easy to do for a spam. You know, uh, most blogs work in the same way, so it's pretty easy to automate. Just and it's very hard for tens of thousands of different blog owners to to figure out that this is the same person and delete all of their comments at once because it's not centralized service. So one of the good things about having a centralized service is that it's really easy for us to tell when someone's doing something bad and take care of it. Just last question, and that on, on that more on the international side, what do you do to, to make sure that the picture is like in French or German or...? It's coming. It's one of the big areas of effort. Now it's, um, the site is fully, the, the content that people put up can be in any language, so it supports Unicode, so crazy Icelandic accents or Korean, whatever, that all works. The interface is not localized yet, uh, so... Uh, is, is that, is that, does that go to your group, your group has to do it, or is it Yahoo, another group inside of There's Yahoo? There's actually a lot of... Um, localization and internationalization experts around Yahoo. There's a whole group of engineers that are devoted to it and stuff like that. So we'll definitely avail ourselves of them. It's pretty low level core functionality though, so obviously the Flickr team itself will be working on a lot of it. I mean, ideally, we're, we're doing a lot of upfront effort to create a framework so it's easy to do it over and over again. Um, and you know, we definitely like to be 
in French, but also German, Spanish, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. So there already are losers in all of those countries. Exactly, exactly. But but that's not an, any idea of when it's coming this year, maybe next year. Maybe. Maybe. We I mean, don't really tend not to comment on this. Yeah. It, it, it's not going to be in the next couple months, but it yeah. is coming. Yeah. So it's not it's not top priority. It's not something that. Well, it's the top priority is always hard to say. There's like maybe three or four that are basically tied. Okay. Um, it's top priority. It's one of the top priorities, but it's. Uh, it's a longer term thing because it's complicated. Uh, but, you know, just doing it once is very easy. But if we want to be able to do it for a dozen or two dozen languages, then we want to do it in a way that's going to be very easy to track. And also, one of the concerns is that that is something that actually will slow down development. So if you have some new feature we want to roll out uh, and we're operating in nine languages, then we need to that the Korean translator is on vacation for a week and we've got to wait for the first thing. It doesn't really work again because he has a big company, has plenty of people. But it's slightly more complicated. We have to explain the feature and document it, write the documentation in English, and then work with people in other languages to make sure it actually makes sense and is comprehensible. Right. And you don't have any Flickr sort of agent at all the Yahoo location outside the US? No, no. But I mean, we are all one company, and so we can, uh, when we go to launch, say, in France, um, there's a whole team. You know, France, there's also you know, EU, which is another organization, um, and both them and central international services can all help with things like you know, compliance with, with local laws and uh, uh, other issues that come up you know, on a country-by-country -country basis. So there might, you know, France probably, from a UI perspective, very similar to the Flickr.com site. And everything will be at Flickr.com because it's you want it to be a global, you know, you shouldn't have little islands and you should all be connected. But on the other hand, Korea, where I don't know if you looked at Korean web development, but it's all crazy colors and flashing and things that to a lot of North American internet users are annoying, you know, or it's too much, but uh, Koreans love it. So, you know, there's a probability that. Uh, there'll be slightly different looks in different countries. Do you see Flickr uh, coincide one day with Yahoo Photos, or is that...? It could happen in the future. There's no immediate plans to do it. I mean, when I say the future, I mean several years from now, because we're not working towards it at this time. But Yahoo Photos just um, just released. I'm not sure if it's totally public yet or if it's still in beta, but a new version. Um, right. And it's, it's pretty excellent. I mean, it's really... Uh, uh, there's some things in there that came from Flickr, but there's also some things in there that are that are new that may come back into Flickr. So are there two teams working together, or no? They actually work separately, but we I mean we, we meet periodically and keep each other abreast of what's going on and share technologies and stuff right. like that. But they're in different parts of the company. We also serve. I mean, yeah, photos is um, more mainstream. Yeah, it's more mainstream. It's it's much larger than Flickr. There's a much larger audience for uh, for that kind of service. Um, Flickr's getting, I mean, it's interesting. The, the early Flickr users were real hardcore geeks, basically. Uh, you know, they were people who were technology enthusiasts. Uh, now there's, it's, it's gone mainstream. It has, you know, there's 16 million unique visitors a month, or whatever it is now. Um, so it's a lot, you know, that's, that's bigger than the number of uh, technology enthusiasts. But it's mainstream in a different way. Uh, just like, if you think about uh, scrapbooking. Know that is, but it, it, that's a very mainstream activity where people get a book and they put their photos in there and their drawings and report card or wedding invitation and things they clip on a magazine and collages and stuff like that. It's actually a huge industry in the U.S. now. Uh, it's very creative. It's mainstream, but it's not mainstream in the sense that everyone does it. Whereas uh, Yahoo Photos is, is a much wider appeal. I think that there are people, you know, there's women in their 50s who don't fit into the early adopter demographic who are really happy users of Flickr because um, we actually get the story a lot where they were really creative when they were younger and then they had kids and life got all hectic and now the kids are gone and they're finally getting back to their their creative activities and so they're using photography and they have an audience and they meet all these people but there are other kind of people that would have a myspace profile or, or have a blog or you know 
get the latest version of every piece of software that comes out. So there, you know, that is, it's, it's, it's different because it's not a necessarily a mainstream activity, but it is a mainstream audience. Right. Uh, most of the Flickr people that came with the, uh, yeah, ac the acquisition yeah, are here? Still, still, yeah. Everyone came. Uh, well, there's actually one person who worked at Flickr, which is the parent company, who didn't come, but he, it was, uh, before we started Flickr, we were working on the game, and the game was really his, his thing. So when we were working on Flickr, he did kind of operational stuff, payroll, uh, buying hardware, negotiating leases and stuff like that. And uh, when we were acquired, he went back to school, which he's planning to do it, in any case. But everyone who was actually working on the development of Flickr came and is still there. Mm. All moved here to Silicon Valley? Oh, well, one of them lived in New York before, and he stayed in New York. One of them already lived here and was working remotely, and so he still lives here. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, everyone moved down, a lot of people. And it's, uh, from, from Canada? Yeah, from Canada, everyone had to get, and, you know, all this stuff comes up. Some of us had to get work visas. I didn't. There's a couple of us who are dual U.S. Canadian citizens. Get work visas, find a new apartment, get a driver's license, you know, all that. It's a lot of stuff to do, and while, meanwhile, we're growing you know, doubling every 45 days or 50 days, that, uh, it was, that was a hard time. It took us a long time to really get back into the rhythm of development. And, and how do you promote Flickr? Do you, do you go to Yahoo to, the, I mean, to maybe, I don't know, the, the corp and say, well, uh, put Flickr, uh, the Flickr logo or on, on, on the homepage? Yeah, do, do you, do you, we, do you, we promote, are you we concerned? We basically the same way that we always did, which was we do a good job and then hope that people tell, tell other people. I mean, obviously, we built a lot of tools. All the stuff to help people blog is a good feature for them, but it also means that there's lots of links going to Flickr and a lot of people posting photos which link to Flickr. Um, so it's kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're valuable features for people, but they also help promote Flickr itself. And to be honest, I think that we're happy with Flickr, we're very proud of it, and stuff like that. But we still have a long way to go. It's still confusing to new users very often. Some people take to it like that. Other people are, don't understand what it is. or you know. So it's a slightly different paradigm than people are used to. So it's the best possible introduction is having someone you already know explain it to you, tell you about it, show you how it works. And obviously the people who come in that way are, are much happier and uh, much more likely to enjoy it. So, and we're still growing very, very quickly, mm. you know, without any advertising or promotion. Gervais Restaurant. Authentic French cuisine in Silicon Valley.